Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn if you are new here and um, my birthday was last week, 23, and um, I got a lot of very exciting books for my birthday. So I thought I would do a very quick birthday book haul. I've already read one and a half, uh, one and a half of these books. I just couldn't wait. Um, so I thought that I would just share because who doesn't love a haul? Um, I thought I would start out with a book that I have already read. I just couldn't help myself. And that is The Pisces by Melissa Broder. So, I'm sure you've seen this book circulating around. That's a fun cover. Um, and if you have heard anything about this, you probably have heard that it's about a woman who has a relationship with a merman or a sea creature. Um, so when I heard about this book, I was intrigued, but I didn't know if it would be like The Shape of Water, which is a horrible movie. Please do not watch that. I saw that with my mom, actually. She visited me at college, and we were lying there wondering what was what was happening to us when we watched that movie. Um, but no, this book is like the perfect compilation of Aquamarine, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, and Girl Interrupted. I mean, three of my favorite things on this earth. It is the woman Lucy is unwell in every single respect of the word. Um, and we're just watching her fumble her way through life and various relationships and various sexual exploits and um, just basically making a mess of her life. Um, it's dirty, it's disgusting, it's hilarious. Um, I just can't speak more to it, but I will in my wrap-up. But um, if you love Moshfag, you will love this. I was thoroughly entertained. Um, just like a really fun, disturbing read would recommend. Okay, then, very different book. Inferno, um, a memoir of motherhood and madness by Catherine Cho. Um, this is obviously Catherine Cho's experience um, as a very newly postpartum woman. She went on vacation with her partner and child and um, experienced a psychotic break and was hospitalized. Um, and she's kind of piecing back her, how her brain was functioning in those days and what was happening to her and her relationship to motherhood and her idea of motherhood. Um, and I think it's just supposed to be really vulnerable and incredible. Um, Grace spoke so, so highly of this book. Um, she reconstructs her sense of self, starting with her childhood, uh, moving through a traumatic past relationship and onto the early years of her courtship with her current husband. Um, the result is a powerful exploration of psychosis and motherhood. Um, intensely personal, yet withhold, yet holding within it a universal experience of how we love, live, and understand ourselves. I've been recently really enjoying memoirs and autofiction, and I'll read anything about motherhood and mother-child relationships, um, and how a woman's brain is functioning in any given time in her life. This sounds incredible. I'm so, so, so excited to read this. Um, I just wasn't, like, in the headspace to read it. But that was the one I thought I was going to pick up first, but then sometimes you just need a romp about a sexy sea animal. Okay. Then, we have Lanny by Max Porter. I just recently spoke about this in my cover flops video. Um, this has been on my list for a very, very long time. This is the better cover of the two that I've seen. Um, I don't know too much about the actual plot of this book. I know that this book blew up when it came out. It's supposed to be about a young boy in a very small, like, cozy town, and there is a magical, fantastical character, dead Papa Toothworts. Gonna have to learn how to say that. Um, I don't know, but it's a very um, unique and imaginative writing style and looks really fun to read. And, um, I mean, this is just a really beloved book, so I'm excited. Then, one that my girl Iggy just read and was absolutely obsessed with, Freshwater by Quake Yamezi. Um, obviously the death of Vivek OJ is very much loved, but of the two books, this one is more my cup of tea just from the blurb. Um, tells the story of Ada, an unusual child who is a source of deep concern for her southern Nigerian family. Young Ada is troubled, prone to violent fits. Born with one foot on the other side, she begins to develop separate selves within her as she grows into adulthood. Um, when she travels to America for college, a traumatic event on campus crystallizes the selves into something powerful and potentially dangerous. So, so interesting. Um, I mean, Iggy, like, 
completely was obsessed with this book. She just read it. Um, it sounds incredible. Really enjoy this cover. Don't know what's happening. But I'm just intrigued by Amezi in general as an author. But this book sounds very, very strange and fantastical. So, okay. Um, then we have Love and Other Thought Experiments by Sophie Ward, another Booker nominee, um, and another weird one in terms of form and structure. Um, it's about a couple, Rachel and Eliza, who are planning their future together, and then it gets strange. Um, it's supposed to be um, kind of sectioned off into different, very famous thought experiments, and then reflecting those back to Rachel and Eliza's relationship. I don't really know anything more than that. Um, what follows is a uniquely imaginative sequence of interlinked stories ranging across time, place, and perspective to form a sparkling psychological tale of love, lost, and found across the universe. I don't know, but love this cover. I've been really interested in this book since it got all the hype for the Booker nomination. Um, I need to be in a very specific mindset to read something like this. It feels like it's going to be a very, like, smart book, and I'm not always in that mood. You know what I mean? But we'll see. Okay. Then, um, so those are books that my parents, well, really my mom, very kindly gave to me. Um, I did give her a list. She never would have picked any of these on her own. She's an English teacher. If that tells you anything, I would have had a book about, like, the Grimke sisters and the Underground Railroad and World War II. Um... So yes, she never would have picked up the Pisces on her own. Poor woman doesn't even know what it's about. It's for the best. Um, but Miriam from another book thought kindly sent me, so, so kindly sent me two books for my birthday. Um, she asked, since I do have a wish list and I don't have one because I'm not really someone who's going to post a list of things I want on the internet and hope somebody will just send them to me. Um, but Miriam insisted that she wanted to send me something and I said, well just send me a book that's really important to you or your favorite book because that would mean a little bit more. And she sent me two books with such incredible notes for both. Um, Emma Watson is blurred on the back of this one. I already love it. Um, first up, Heartberries by Therese Marie Mailhot. I've seen this cover floating around just because it's a beautiful cover but I don't know anything about the book. Um, Heartberries is a powerful poetic memoir of a woman's coming of age, um, having survived a profoundly dysfunctional upbringing, only to find herself hospitalized and facing a dual diagnosis. Therese is given a notebook and writes her way out of trauma. Um, sounds incredible. Again, been loving the memoir, been loving getting into a woman's brain and seeing how vulnerable and how much she's sharing with us. Um, and Miriam says this one's important to her, so I'm very, very excited to read it. Thank you, Miriam. Love you. Okay, and then this one, have never seen, know nothing about, Salt Water by Jessica Andrews. Um, I will just redo the blur because I seriously have no idea. Um, from the first immaculate fluid connection through the ups and downs of a working class childhood in northern England, the one constant in Lucy's life has been her mother, comforting and mysterious, ferociously loving, tirelessly devoted, and as much a part of Lucy as her own skin. Her mother's lessons in womanhood shaped Lucy's appreciation of desire, her sense of duty as a caretaker, her hunger for a better, perhaps reckless life. At university in glamorous London, Lucy's background sets her apart, and then she's finished, graduated, adrift. Hi. She escapes to a tiny house left empty by her grandfather, a place where her mother once found happiness. There she'll take a lover, live inside art and the past, and track back through her memories and her mother's stories to make sense of her place in the world. I mean... Does Miriam know me or what? This sounds like my ideal book. A mother-daughter relationship, intimate, heartbreaking, emotionally magnificent. I'm expecting all of these things. And again, Miriam spoke so highly of it and left me such thoughtful and loving notes with each book. So I will link her. She recently started YouTube as well. She was a bookstagrammer and still has an incredible um, Instagram account, but she very recently started her own YouTube account. Um, and right now she just started, it's Mental Health Awareness May. She's teaching me so many things. Um, and she's doing this series of reading some of her favorite bookstagrammers or booktubers' favorite books um, about mental health. So definitely check that out. She has so much to say. She's so smart. She's so thoughtful. And I just feel so lucky to have met her across the internet and have connected with her um, because could you be kinder? 
So thank you so much. I'm very, very excited about those. I don't know which I'll pick up first. I need to be emotionally prepared for both of them. Okay. Then, four books that I purchased for myself because treat yourself. Um, one I am currently reading. Sorrowland by River Solomon. Um, I loved The Deep by River Solomon, which is a skinny little book um, about mermaids. There's, there's a theme going on. Um, I read that last year. Absolutely loved it. Would recommend. This one, I'm a little less than halfway. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I obviously had heard about this book. I was just going to pick it up anyway because of how much I loved The Deep. But I think I should have read the blur because I just like... I'm so confused. Um, it's a weird one, but I am enjoying myself. I just, like, I will enjoy myself more once I know what direction it's going. I mean, their last book was about mermaids, so I should have prepared myself with that. Um, but this is about Vern. Seven months pregnant and desperate to escape, the strict re religious compound where she was raised flees for the woods. There she births twins and plans to raise them far away from the outside world, but even in the forest, Vern is a hunted woman. First to, forced to fight back against the community that refused, refuses to let her go, she unleashes incredible brutality far beyond what a person should be capable of. Her body ra racked with inexplicable and uncanny changes. To perfect, protect her family, Vern has to face the past and the future outside of the woods. So this is kind of where I am in the book right now. Um, Vern is leaving the woods. Something very strange is happening to her body and it's definitely started out as um, a person fleeing a cult which is something that I love reading about I've read a lot about before um, but but now it's like fantastical and something else is happening to her physical body and I'm I don't know what I don't know <laughs> which way this book is going um, but I love River Solomon so I trust them and I'm just riding this wave. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. We will see. Um, I just couldn't help myself. I got another mosh bag. Eileen. Um, don't know anything about this book. But I read, obviously, my year of rest and relaxation. Read Homesick for Another World. And I just will read anything she writes. Um, the Christmas season offers little cheer for Ellen Dunlop, a young woman trapped between her role as, as her alcoholic father's caretaker um, and her day job as a secretary at a boy's prison. Okay, it's already a lot. Consumed by resentment and self-loathing, Eileen dreams of escaping to the big city. In the meantime, she fills her nights and weekends with shoplifting, stalking a buff prison guard named Randy, and cleaning up her increasingly deranged father's messes. When the bright, beautiful, and cherry, cheery, okay, Rebecca St. John arrives on the scene as the prison's new counselor, Eileen is enchanted and proves unable to resist what appears at first to be a miraculously budding friendship. Um unravels into a crime that surpasses her wild, wildest imaginings. I mean, sounds like another really unwell young woman who I will absolutely love reading about. Yeah, I mean, guys, I'll just read whatever she writes. If you've read any mosh bag, this mosh bag, please tell me your thoughts without spoilers, of course. Charmingly disturbing, delightfully dour, pleasing, ple pleasingly perverse. From NPR, which we love. Okay. Then, okay, are you surprised? Everyone else has read it, and I'm behind, and that's just the way of it, but I just couldn't help myself. Unearth Ruby Free Gor Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. Um, you all know what this book is about. Everyone's talked about this book, says it's the most stunning thing they've ever read. Um, exploration of race, class, and masculinity. Um, writing to his mother who can't read, so he's sharing things that he probably wouldn't have. Um, about the power of telling one's own story, as it is about obliterating the silence of not being heard. I mean, everyone that I like on the inter internet has absolutely obsessed over this book. Um, cannot wait to read it. Again, I need to be in the right headspace, because I know that this one has like really struck a chord with a lot of people. I mean, it's so much of Ocean Vong's own mind and his own experiences so I know it will be like deeply personal and intimate and vulnerable so very excited and then lastly a book that I got for myself because why not Helen Oyemi White is for Witching um Oyemi has so many books recently came out with a book called Pieces um but of 
Oyemi's books, this one is the most interesting to me. It's like a haunted house story. Um, there's something strange about the Silvers family house in a closed off town of Dover, England. Grand, with hidden passages and buried secrets, it's been home to four generations of silver women. Interested. Um, the women have a strong connection and pull one another across time and space. And one of the girls, Miranda, begins suffering strange ailments. Um, there are eating disorders talked about in this book. She's hearing voices. Um, Dover's hostility towards, towards outsiders physically manifests within the four walls and leaves everyone irrevocably changed. Sounds very, very interesting. People have loved this book. I love a little bit of creepy haunted house stuff. Um, other than like Shirley Jackson, I was bored out of my brain, but I'm very excited about this. So yes, that is my birthday book haul. I just wanted to share um, basically what I'll be reading the next few weeks probably because these are all ones that I've wanted to read for so, so long. I feel, I feel like I'll just read one right after the next. Um, so I've already read The Pisces, finishing up Sorrowland, but if you have any recommendations of which I should absolutely read next, please let me know. They all sound incredible, but um, yes, just wanted to share. Again, thank you so much, Miriam. Love you. You're so kind. Um, so yes, I just wanted to do a little haul. I've never done one before on my channel. Um, yeah, just please let me know which one you think I should read next or if you're also planning on reading one and so we could chat about it. Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you feel so inclined and I will be back soon with another video. Bye everyone.